So here I am at uh, BBC Radio Gloucestershire again and um, I'm on the Vernon Harbour today talking about my great uncle's war medal which I found on eBay this week. Um, so I'm going to patch in the radio recording which, which I'm about to do after the end of this little video. So uh, I hope you enjoy it. Cheers. Now a remarkable story. There's a farmer who, uh, well, of course it's a busy life being a, a farmer, but um, this particular farmer t took a bit of time out to surf the internet. And it's whilst he was doing that, he stumbled across a family heirloom. He's a familiar voice on this programme. Rich Cornock, who's a farmer, dairy farmer at Titherington, joins us now on the programme. Hello, you've been in the news this week. Hi, Vernon. All right. Yeah, <laughs> quite unexpectedly, actually. I didn't think you had time to go surfing the internet. Well, that's the beauty of a smartphone, isn't it? You can be on your <laughs> tractor and uh, muck spreading while you're looking at your phone for something interesting. So what were you looking for, I dare ask? Well, actually, it's funny. I wasn't looking for what I found. Um, our name, surname is Cornock, and it is... It's a local name, and it's quite an old name, and it's an unusual name. It's not common. And um, what I did, I actually put my name, surname, in Cornock into eBay. Um, I've done it before, and I actually found an old um, sales poster from about 1840 from, from our family. So oh. I was sort of thinking, you know, I wonder if there's anything else out there related to it. If you're not aware of what that is, it's an internet auction site. It's a, effectively a marketplace where you can put up something that you want to sell, and then mm. people from anywhere in the world can bid for it. That's right. And you saw what? Well... Oh, I couldn't believe my eyes, actually. I, I was just thinking, oh, there'd be nothing much exciting. My book's on there, and I thought I might find another copy of that. I don't want another one of those. Um, I, I, well, what happened? A medal popped up, but it, it, the title of the medal was um, Gloucester Yeomanry. It didn't mention Cornock in the dis description. And I thought, well, that's familiar, because I know my great-uncle was in the Gloucester Yeomanry, but it was only when I went on the sales description, it actually said, presented to William L. Cornock, which is William Levi Cornock, um, Gloucester Yeomanry. And it must have been him because that is not really a common name, well, is exactly, it? Exactly, you know, and I knew it, uh, there's no other, not William Levi Cornox in the Gloucester Yeomanry because I'd already checked that. Um, and I realised it was my great uncle's war medal. And I couldn't believe it. And I, I thought I had butterflies then because I thought I can't let this go. <laughs> You know, <laughs> so what did you do? You're on your tractor. Well, I, I but you know, you can mark these things ready for the, the sale. Had a day and a half to go, and I thought, and it was actually listed for forty pounds starting bid. And I thought, well, I'm not gonna not gonna let this go. So I, I put in a quite a high reserve on it, and I, luckily I was the only bidder, and I got oh, it. Gosh, uh, I actually emailed the, quite the seller before um, it was over there, and just said. Um, how do you know this is William Levi Cornock's medal? Because I don't know, didn't know much about war medals at that point. And I didn't realise, but every World War I medal had the name of the um, person it was presented to engraved around the edge of the medal, which meant you could identify who had that medal. They didn't do that in World War II. No. So I knew I was on the right track It here. certainly makes it uh, useful, doesn't it, for family oh, historians or anyone yeah. just trying to trace an heirloom. Well, that's right. And it's also nice for people, even if it's not their family's medals, you can also find the medals and trace them and do a little bit of history about someone. You know, it's a nice project for someone to do. So um, you stumped up your 40 quid. Yeah. <laughs> and a couple of days later, what popped through the post? Well, it, well, it arrived. And, and here it is now, Vern. And if you want, I'll just hand now, it Now, I've not here. seen this at all. There I you. haven't seen this at all. Thank you very much indeed. It's this made is... of silver, actually. It is. It's... And this, uh, there were three medals that were given out to, given out, presented uh, in the 1920s, actually, to those who'd served. There was the 1914 star for those who were in the conflict from the outset. Then there was the British War Medal. This is the British mm. uh, War Medal. Um, and on the front, there's a, a picture of uh, a rider uh, mounted on a horse and on Saint the George, reverse apparently. it's uh, is it oh is that mm. meant to be St George St George it? on that I know this, I googled it when he, I got it. He looks a little more athletic yeah, he's than got a sword there, isn't he? He has. And uh, then on the reverse uh, there is uh, King George uh, and uh, the uh, inscription in Latin of course but it mentions uh, King George and then a ribbon in gold blue and white with black edging and uh, so this was the British War Medal and then the third medal which was presented was the Victory Medal. Now they were colloquially known as Pip, Squeak and Wilfred because there was a, a famous cartoon at the time uh, called Pip, Squeak and Wilfred. Um, in fact, the, the cartoon describes it as their lovely adventures. Mm. And you could buy the comic for two bob. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't buy anything for two bob now, but anyway. Um, <clears throat> and uh, this is the, the second of those three medals. So this... This is the, the war medal. So this is Squeak. That's right. So this is Squeak. Yeah. And that is absolutely fantastic. And if you just turn it round, 
I can just, I'm going to read this out, and it says, my eyesight's tight. I actually got to take my specs off it's to read this. It's hard to read it, it's very small. It says 2450 Private W.L. Cornock Gloss Yo. Gloucestershire yeah, Yeomanry. Yeomanry. That is a beautiful thing. How did it end up on an internet auction site? What happened to well, it? Well, it's a very interesting story. My great uncle, um, he grew up on the farm. Uh, well, and that's the farm you work and live on now. That's live on now. He was born in the farmhouse, actually. Um, and he was 20 when he went, well, when World War II, uh, I started. Um, and he joined the Gloucester Yeomanry. I'm not, I haven't found his war record yet to know exactly where he was, but obviously there's Gallipoli that they were involved in. Um, now, he went off to war and he came back. Obviously, he survived the battles which he was involved in, which is very lucky because the survival mm. rate was very... Do you know he you know, served out in Gallipoli? Because, of course, this weekend has been well, the 100th anniversary. I'm not 100% sure. I know he's in Palestine um, and uh, because I got a postcard he sent from, from there, with a, unfortunately, with dead horses on it, which is an unusual postcard to send. Um, I haven't tracked his war record down to be exactly sure where he is. Now, it's certainly the Gloucester Yeoman who were involved in Gallipoli, mm. Um, but I can't categorically say that unless I'm, you know, checking yes. it out. It depends when he uh, when he actually That's joined. That's right. Yeah, because conscription didn't come in until the following year, till 1916. Right. So. Yeah, so, you know, when he was out there, I'm not 100% sure. Um, now, he came back, and apparently the story goes that when he came back, his own mother didn't recognise him when he arrived because... You know, his time spent out in, the, in uh, fighting and in the hot climate, they just didn't, you know, he must have changed dramatically, mm. lost weight, I imagine, and, and very tanned, didn't recognise him. But he came back, cut long story short, he came back, lived a full life and retired to Birmingham. Um, him and his wife, they didn't unfortunately have any children. So when, when they both died, uh, my father inherited a few items and a bit of money, but the remainder of the property and the belongings were actually sold off, like a house clearance. Uh, and we somehow managed to retain the photographs of him out in World War One, you know, in the desert and things. But we didn't actually know there were any medals. I wasn't really aware that they, that they rewarded these medals. So for 45 years, this medal left the family in about 1970. It was sold off. Someone had it. And this person I bought it from on eBay, I actually contacted them and said, how did you get it? And you know, the interesting thing, I was very lucky to get it back because he actually bought it from a, a jeweller in Birmingham and it had been sold as scrap. Oh, how tragic because that would have been. Because it's made of been. silver. Yeah. I actually weighed it and worked out the scrap value of it is about 12 quid. Yeah. So someone had weighed that in. Now, thankfully, I don't know who this jeweller is. I don't expect I'll ever find out. But he obviously thought, rather than just melt it down, he'd, yeah. he'd sold it on to a metal dealer, presumably because he knew the value of it. But perhaps also, I like to think that he thought that it was better than just selling it for, for You'd silver. Hope so. You really you know? hope so. What a remarkable story. We'll talk a bit about the farm and great uncle bill and what you know about him and mm. also i'm desperate to know what you're going to do with the medal now anyway we'll yeah. talk about this more. it's a great story it's a fantastic story with rich cornock here on the beep in just a few minutes from now on fm and 14 13 a.m let's take a look at gloucestershire's weather forecast <laughs> So the rain easing into the afternoon, some sunny spells over lunchtime and those fine conditions spreading south across the county for the rest of the day. Cold though, 12 degrees, 54 today. Clear skies tonight, look out for a frost in the countryside. One is 34 Fahrenheit. Clear skies for Monday morning to start off, which means some lovely sunshine first thing. Scattered showers in the afternoon and it will feel cold in the breeze tomorrow. 12 is 54. The midweek period, cold and breezy and showers for Tuesday and then into Wednesday we've got strong Stronger winds and more persistent rain, I'm afraid. Rich Cornock is with us. He's a dairy farmer from Titherington making the remarkable discovery on an internet auction site this uh, week, or in fact last week, of his great uncle Bill's war medal from the First World War. Squeak, as it was known by everyone. Pip, Squeak and Wilfred were the names, the nicknames of the three war medals. Uh, and uh, this is uh, Squeak. So I've got to ask, what are you going to do with the medal now? Well, I mean, do you know, you're not the first person to say that to me. And the thing is... I didn't have a plan for this medal because I didn't know it existed only two weeks ago. So it's arrived at the um, the house uh, and we were all really kind of pleased to see it again, really. Um, you know, it's said it's been missing 45 years. Uh, the main thing is it'll stay in the family and, and that's what I want it to do. It'll go together with the photographs we've got. Um, and this morning I had my little son actually giving it a bit of a polish. And he's only um, three, and oh, I helped him polish that's it. That's nice. I, d and, I thought it yeah. looked in really good nick, by the way. Yeah, I did polish it up before I brought it out to show you, you know. <laughs> bit of a shine for the BBC. Quite right. Um, but, you know, he's a Cornock as well, and it's come down, all mm. that 
you know, time. It's 100 years ago mm. since the um, Gloucester Yeomanry went out there to uh, Gallipoli. And it's magic that it's back in our family. I'm so chuffed. And, and that's the main thing, is to keep it where it belongs, I think, you know. So is the idea to to frame it, maybe, put it on the wall or... Well, possibly. Someone I sent me a link you'd be, today. You'd be qualified to wear it, I suppose. Oh, I, I mean, you're allowed that. to. I don't think I could bring myself to wear it, really? to be honest. Well, you know, the guy who if won you that... Re- if you represented him at some sort of I remembrance so. event... A lot of people do. Yeah, I've never thought about that, really. Um, You know, I feel kind of it belongs to someone who worked hard to get it. And, you know, I don't think I deserve to wear it, really. I think he deserved to wear it, you know. What was life like for him? It must have been an enormous wrench to to leave that farm in 1940, 1950. Oh, it must have been amazing, wasn't it? I mean, we can't imagine what it could be like. We all know. If, if, if we're going on holiday, we can do Google Earth, we can go and see the street that we're going to, we can find out all about it. Some of our friends have probably been there. You know, a, a young man growing up on a farm in, in Gloucestershire in 1914, suddenly to be shipped out to Turkey or, or to Palestine... He wouldn't have a clue, would you? You, would, you know, probably no one from New Village might have been abroad. Was it a dairy farm in Uncle Bill's time? Um, I'd have to ask my dad that. I think probably there were sheep and beef. Um, and if there were dairy cows, there would be only sort of three or four. It would have been a small scale, like all, all farms then, you know, mm. probably a mixed farm. Sheep, beef, cattle, bit of corn, you know, a bit of everything, really. But certainly horses on the farm, which is, which is probably where it was very useful for him in, in the yeomanry, because that was a mounted um, division. Um and, you know, or pictures of him with his horses, and he would have grown up, you know, tending those horses on the farm. And, of course, that was crucial for the yeomanry, of course. It was having men in the yeomanry who understood yeah. equines. It was, you know, it sort of cut a lot of you the know, training out. if you've out. grown up with an animal, you know, around you, you just get the feel of them, don't you? You know, you know how to treat them. You're not going to run up them and spook them, you know, because you, you've had that ability to know how they work and, and how they think. We're talking about an era as well when um, if you had any useful horse yeah it would have been requisitioned that's right you know, i mean the I only horses know. that were left really were old nags that's right i mean i don't know whether any horses were taken off of our farm at all um must have been very difficult in that time if you well if, if they you, were any good they almost yeah. certainly would have been you know if you were using if you're trying to make a living and then someone takes your best horse and leaves you with the old donkey very difficult mm. isn't it mm. but you know needs must you know at the end of the day you're fighting a battle for freedom you know you're not going to stand there and go you can't have that horse yeah. are you and of course this is the era when although there were one or two tra- tractors around the very mm. very first early tractors they were really i mean people would stop and stare if they saw yeah. a tractor so you relied on your horsepower i imagine that the tractors then were very expensive and very unreliable as well you mm. know it's not like a modern tractor where you can turn the key and it'll start i mean you get the cranking handle out turn yeah. it over on a frosty uh, morning would have cost a fortune as well yeah yeah you know my dad remembers the cart horses on our farm they were still there till the early 50s so um you know, most in that era, most people had horses on the farm, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what do we know about Great Uncle Bill? Because he was alive in your first few years. In That's fact, right. he bought a christening spoon for you, didn't he? He did, actually. I've still got a christening spoon he gave me, um, which is which is nice. When I, when I got the medal, I remembered I had the christening spoon. I thought, oh, my goodness me, I did actually have some contact with him, even though I can't really remember him. Mm. Uh, my dad remembers him quite well, and he was quite a character, I think. He was a very good sportsman, played football. And he had trials for Bristol Rovers, I believe. Yeah. Um, And after the war, he was a travelling salesman. And I've got a lovely picture of him in an old vintage car, um, which we found the other day. And on the back of it, he's written, My first car, 1924. (laughs) What was your first car, (laughs) Vernon? It's a long time ago. It wasn't 1926. It's probably less reliable than Great Uncle Bill's, to be honest with you. But what is nice is the fact that this is a real person. It's not just a little kind of picture of someone you don't know. You know, there's family stories about him. You know, I've got some pictures of him playing tennis and things like that. He had quite a good life. I think he was a travelling salesman between Bristol and Gosh. Birmingham. You've brought in loads of pictures here from the postcards, mm. including the one you mentioned from Palestine of the, of yeah, the dead horses. Yeah, that's quite a shocking one. We've had um, a call from Peter who says, on the subject of medals, around 40 years ago I was at an auction and I ended up buying a box of odds and ends for half a crown. Last year I was having a look through the box and I came across a medal. A friend helped uh, me do a bit of research and we discovered that the medal was awarded to Private Wits, who used to work on a farm at Hardwick. He was only 15, but he got his stepbrother to sign up to say that he could join the army. It was only when he came back after getting injured in 1915 that his real age was discovered. Private Wits was with the Gloucesters, and Peter has his regimental number, which was 8948. He says, it's a fascinating story, and I'd be very happy to let any family member of Private Wits 
Have the medal. Oh, lovely. Gosh, isn't that a wonderful thing? That is thing? lovely. Yeah. You Thank know, you for that, Peter. That's, uh, that's very generous. That's what it's about, I think. I think these medals uh, need to be with the people that they sort of, the families that, you know, were involved with that, really, rather true, than just a stuffy thing on a, in a drawer somewhere, really. Yeah. No, it's, it really is true. Thanks for coming in with the medal. Lovely, it's, a, it's a wonderful story. And I know a few years ago you wrote your book about a hmm. year on the farm. I, I think did. you've got a new book in Great Uncle Bill, well, you know, you with those know. pictures and the medal and a bit of research at uh, maybe at the custom house in the docks and... Yeah. Uh, maybe in the war, the uh, the army records. I'm certainly going to go London. and try and find a bit more about him. I think. Yeah, that's great. Great to see you, Rich. You must come in again soon. Thanks, mate. A couple of months time, and we'll talk a bit more once the summer's here about what life's like on the farm. Great story. I'm glad you've been reunited with that medal. Fantastic stuff. Rich Cornock there, and the story of Great Uncle Bill's squeak, squeak the name of that war medal. What a great tale to tell. Vernon Harwood on BBC Radio Gloucestershire.